Hey everyone, this is Travis Serio with Rhino3D.com, and I wanted to share a new feature included with the latest Rhino 7 work in progress called Quad Remesh. Quad Remesher is a new command that generates quad dominant mesh objects from NURBS objects or existing mesh objects. It's ideal for creating meshes for analysis, reverse engineering, or other downstream applications such as subdivision modeling. Here you can see we have an original STL mesh of a rabbit. The rabbit was remeshed with the new quad remesh command into this perfectly quad optimized mesh. To get started with this command, we can find it from several different locations in the user interface. To do this, we can navigate to the new and version 7 tab. From here, you will find it front and center as quad remesh. The next place that you can locate it is from within the mesh utilities. Since it does work on existing meshes, you can find it here, as well as Mesh, drop-down menu, Edit Tools, Quad Remesh. You can locate it from the Sub-D menu, since the Quad Remesh tool also has the ability to output Sub-D objects. Quad Remesh, as well as the Sub-D drop-down, Edit Tools, Quad Remesh. Lastly, you can also type the Quad Remesh command in the command line. For our first example, I'll remove the existing rabbit that was quad remeshed and create a new one. I'll run the quad remesh command and simply accept the default values. I'll now move those over to see the result. As you can see, the default values make a nice remeshed rabbit. In this second example, we'll explore more of the detailed controls of the quad remesh command. I'll start by selecting this extruded surface and running the command. Here you can see most of the values have been zeroed out or unchecked, except for this target quad count option. In here, we have the target quad count set to 100. What this means is that the algorithm will try to remesh this object and achieve exactly 100 faces. We'll hit OK, and we'll look at the result. Here we can see it has created a valid mesh. If we press the details button, we can see that there are 100 faces within this mesh. So while it achieved a perfect remesh with exactly 100 faces, we lost the curvature near the bottom of the shape. To maintain that curvature, there are a couple other options we can use. Let's run the command again, this time focusing on the adaptive size value. This value tells the algorithm to focus on areas of curvature. From here, we can set a value from 0 to 100. 100 meaning all of the focus should be into the curvature. What will happen in this example is that we have more quads in area of curvature and the flat areas have quads that are more stretched. Pressing the details button will show us how close it was able to achieve the 100 faces. As you can see, we were able to get there with 76, so not quite 100. The curvature is, however, much better. Adaptive Size does a great job of adding more quads in areas of high curvature while at the same time minimizing quads in flat areas. While Target Quad Count and Adaptive Size give a high level of control over the number of quads in the remeshed object, they can often be less respectful of the original shape. This is where the Adaptive Quad Count option is very useful. When activated, the Target Quad Count value may increase to better fit the shape. Here you can see several more quads were added to better represent the original shape. Our next example starts with a poly surface that has a trimmed circle that's been capped in the center. I'll begin by running the quad remesh command and immediately selecting the preview option. This allows us to make several changes and see what's happening in real time. We can select the hide input objects so that we're not distracted by the original object. As you'll notice, the circular edge is no longer visible in the new mesh. If our goal is to retain the circle, then we can use the Use Surface Edges option and set it to Smart. There are two options, Smart and Strict. Smart is generally the preferred of the two, as it will ignore small or irrelevant edges. I'll uncheck Hide Input Objects so that we can see how well those new edges match the circular trimmed edge. I'll go ahead and click OK, and it'll commit our new mesh to the document. 
The next example will use a curve to establish edge flow in the resulting mesh. I'll run the quad remesh command. I'll select preview. I'll select hide input objects. Here we can see that 2000 faces were selected of an adaptive size of 50. I'm going to change this to something more simple, a target edge length. Since our surface is flat and doesn't have a lot of curvature, and it's roughly the size of 10 by 10 millimeters, we should be able to get almost an exact one by one approximation of each edge. I'm going to go a step further since there are no internal edges and select a guide curve. I'll pick the curve, hit go, and you're, here you'll see by default the curve's influence is set to approximate. This lazily matches the resulting mesh to the input curve. From here we can change it to create edge ring or create edge loop. I'm going to select edge loop as it will try to fit a loop of edges right underneath the curve to the best of its ability, all while still trying to maintain a target edge length of one. I'll select OK. In this last example, I'll try to convert this pump dispenser top into a sub-D object for further editing. I'll run the command. I'll immediately hit preview and hide input objects. In looking at this, the number of quads are simply too many to work well as sub-D faces. To remedy this, we'll start by dropping the quad count down to a very low value. This will produce something that has less of the original shape, but has a more optimal number of faces for editing as sub-D. While I like the number of faces that it has, they're highly unorganized now. Using symmetry can often fix this, especially when the object can be mirrored down a center line axis. This does a pretty good job. We can also convert to a sub D at this point to take a look and see what we get. Because detect hard edges are on, the hard edges are transferred into the sub D as creases. If we remove detect hard edges, Anywhere where there's a hard break angle will be removed and those will be rounded over when converted to a sub D. Since we want to preserve that, we'll go ahead and re-enable them. This looks pretty good. We can turn back on the original object to see how well they made up. When converting to sub D, the object will often shrink as the surface relaxes and create higher curvature. To reduce some of that, you can click the interpolate sub D, which will try to fit the sub D object more through the control cage points. We'll go ahead and accept the values, say OK, and now we have a sub D object that's ready for further editing. That concludes all the features of the quad remesh command. I hope you found this video helpful, and we can't wait to see what you make with this new tool.